So today's video is going to be a bit different for my returning subscribers and if you're new here my name is Drew what I do it's nice to meet you. Today I'm going to attempt to give you a comprehensive list of my top winter jackets and coats for the winter. Duh. From cheapest to most expensive, then moving to best retailers, emerging brands, and even the search terms that you should use when you're searching for different coat and jacket options, whether you're going the secondhand route or the vintage route. Disclaimer, winter jackets are so freaking expensive in the grand scheme of things. I tried very hard to find cheap options, but winter jackets and coats are expensive for one. That's something you definitely should know about. And for two, there are so many options that this list while I'm calling it comprehensive, is not going to be all-encompassing. If you have other jacket recommendations, leave them down in the comments because it'll help enrich the community, but I want you guys to understand that. And one more note as a disclaimer in regards to the price of things, I searched for hours and hours and hours trying to find jackets for a relatively cheap price point, and if you know anything about my content, the hardest thing, the cheaper you get, the closer you get to retailers that are just fast fashion, and I don't really talk a lot about fast fashion brands on this channel, so take that with a grain of salt take that with whatever information take it in and, and let that bathe in your thoughts and understand that's the kind of content creator i am okay what i'm calling cheap might not be cheap in the broad sense of things but for those who want to know the cheapest route for buying winter coats or winter jackets is going to be buying them secondhand or vintage starting off with one of your best bang for your buck options when it comes to winter jackets we have two jackets actually at that in the carhartt detroit jacket and the carhartt blanket lined chore coat carhartt was one of the most talked about brands in 2020 especially and rightfully so in my opinion what carhartt has done for a lot of people a lot of young people entering into the fashion game over the last three years or so has really brought down the bar for what the price range you have to be able to buy in to have something that looks stylish or look fashionable and i think that the detroit jacket and especially the blanket lined chore coat for warmth that blanket lining is going to keep you warm are great options for entry-level jackets and coats for the winter if you have no idea where to start if you're younger if you just haven't really invested in jackets i think these are great options men women everyone can wear these these look really good and if workwear isn't really your thing don't worry we got about 25 other jacket options that i'm going to be listing out here in this video and i think one of the best things about carhartt is the fact that you can buy these jackets secondhand so they retail for about 120 dollars each but I was able to find both the car Detroit jacket and the blanket line jacket for under half that price on places like eBay, Depop, vintage resale sites, um, Grailed even. You're able to find these jackets for much cheaper if you know where to look. Okay, next, one of my favorite looks in both menswear and womenswear are liner jackets. Everlane, of all brands, has a quilted cotton liner jacket for under $100 on sale that I think looks like a really good option. It needs to be stated, I don't really have that much experience with Everlane, but I've heard good things about it, and that's why I wanted to throw it into the mix as a relatively cheap entry-level jacket option. And as I mentioned with Carhartt, the same applies for liner jackets in regards to buying them secondhand. Recently in New York, I just bought Lauren a Czech vintage liner jacket. I can't remember what era it's from, but it's a really beautiful jacket. She's been wearing it all the time for under $100 at Front General Store, which is a really cool secondhand shop in New York City. And you can find other liner jackets like this online if you know what to look for search particular country types of liner jackets, look up liner jackets in general, you should be able to find them for sub $100. And they're great for just layering and keeping you warm during the cold. I also found this Stussy liner jacket for $160 on Packer Shoes, which if you know, everyone knows about Stussy. It's a pretty popular brand. If you don't know, it's a pretty cool streetwear brand. I would take a look at something like this as well. You're going to be able to find deals and steals at this time of the year. If you're watching this a little bit later, you probably still are able to find deals, but this Stussy liner jacket on Packer Shoes is an interesting option in my opinion. If you're shopping around for top coats, I found an awesome, an awesome entry level option in the form of Sam Edelman's top coats. These look really, really high in quality, but the price point isn't outrageous like some of other top coat brand options are. I found these ranging anywhere between $100 to $150, which like I said, if you know anything about top coats, that's a freaking good price, okay? That's a good price. 
Another option for women's wear is the Daphne Coat by J. Crew. These retail anywhere between $170 to $250, and because it's the holiday season, they're on sale right now, so you should be able to find them for that lower $170 price range, I hope. And I don't know if you've noticed, but we're slowly creeping up and up from the $100 to $200 price range. The price is getting a little bit more expensive here. Okay, next, the first fleece I want to mention is from New England brand Menressa. They have a couple of good variants, the first one being the Dover fleece at $180. $85 and the Selk Kirk fleece, which sits at around $205 MSRP. Menressa does an awesome job at nailing the fit and the look of their fleeces. And to me, these feel like reimagined old Patagonia style fleeces in the modern context of 2023 fashion. So cool in my opinion. I love these. The first down or puffer jacket that I want to recommend is the This Never That down jacket. I personally love down jackets, especially because I live and have lived in really cold places. New York City is cold, Colorado is cold, and I find that down and puffer jackets just do the best job of making me feel the warmest and most protected from the elements, whether it's snowing, raining, windy, whatever it might be. I think down puffers, like, I just feel warm. The This Never That version looks really solid, it's really clean, and it has a really dynamic price range, which I think makes it a competitive option for those who don't want to spend a ton but also need to have a good piece a good looking piece that's fashionable for the winter i've seen this jacket as low as 127 dollars and as high as like 250 260 270 if you can find one of these in that 127 price range i think you're golden this is a great entry-level option as well okay moving into the more 200 to 400 dollar price range this is where options get really interesting when we start to begin to pay more for winter jackets and coats. Let's kick things off with the Frismworks Harrington Jacket. If you don't know, Frismworks is a Korean brand that specializes in unique pocketing and jacket structure. And this Harrington jacket is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what Frism Works has to offer. I also love their Drizzler jacket, and both of these pieces come in at under $300. One last note about Frism Works. I selected both of these jackets because they stood out to me. They have tons, and I mean tons. I'm talking about like dozens, maybe 10 or more jackets that are really interesting, that are under that $350 price range that I think that if you don't know about them, you should take a look because I think there are some really fun, cool options. And if this is more your style compared to like workwear or something else, give Frism Works a look. It's a really, really cool brand. Switching gears in terms of the style of jackets we're talking about, I found this authentic wool pico by L.L. Bean, and I thought it looked awesome for those who need that top layer coat for the winter who like that style the only thing that kind of rubbed me off with this particular jacket is how kind of where it comes down in the waist i read some of the reviews one of them was negative and it just said that the jacket fit a bit weird so just with all these jackets obviously you're gonna have to understand your own sizing you're gonna have to understand what works for your body what works for your style and just kind of play around with those things but as you go up in price point it becomes a bit more dangerous to play with these things so if you know your fit maybe look at this one and give it an option also, there's a men's version of this jacket that's $50 more expensive than the women's version. One of the coolest, most slept on jackets on this entire list, in my opinion, is this Anderson Raglan check jacket. And I mean, just look at the texture on these product photos. It really speaks for themselves. And I love these colors for the fall and winter, especially. This jacket sits right at $250, which I think is a decent price for something that looks as cool and as beautiful as this. Another stunning piece is this Varley Jones faux fur sweater. I'm not the biggest fan of faux fur or real fur at that, but for some reason this particular piece stood out to me. I don't necessarily love the cinch in with the drawstrings that they have near the front of the garment, but I guess I don't exactly hate it either. Let's just rattle off some fun and practical jackets at the $240 to $290 price range. We have Snowpeak's Thermal Boa Fleece Jacket. I think this is really cool and I love the color for this jacket. Alex Mills Quinn Quilted Jacket. Another one of my favorite brands, Engineered Garments Ripstop Cruiser Jacket. And a really beautiful option is Pendleton's Herringbone Wool Coat. And, you know, I try to include both items from women's wear and men's wear. And one of my favorite kind of women's wear focused brands is Sporty and Rich. When I found out that they were carrying this zipped Sherpa eggplant fleece, I thought it was such a dope option that I wanted to include it in the 
video because I don't know, this is fun. Like I feel like fleeces like this are just super dope. Now each of these jackets serve totally different functions as winter outerwear. And if you've never seen any of them before, well, you're welcome. Give this video a like, subscribe. I'll be doing this for the next hopefully 10, 15 years. <laughs> Alrighty, we're moving into the 300 plus dollar price range when it comes to winter jackets. And this is where jackets and coats get really expensive really fast, but this is where you see a lot of your kind of stylish, more influential people, the price range in which they're wearing their jackets at. And maybe if you just really like fashion, this is the perfect section for you. Well, you can really like fashion, but just not have the money. You also have to have the money, so I take that statement back a, look, a little bit. Let's start with one of the most popular winter jackets in the marketplace. We have the North Face's Nupsy Down Jacket. The Nupsy Jacket is a jacket I see all the time in New York City. I would say it's probably the most popular fashion-forward jacket that I see. I see a style by both men and women. It looks relatively good. I think it looks pretty good. And for $300, it probably should look pretty freaking good. But what I think is the best thing about the Nupsy is the fact that you can find it secondhand as well, like some of the other more kind of very popular big brand jackets that I've mentioned on this list. So if you don't have $300 or $330, whatever the retail price is, make sure to check this jacket out on eBay, on Depop, on secondhand sites, because I think you can find it for a little bit less than that. Next, one of my personal favorite style of jackets is Arcteryx's Adam hoodie, which is, it's called a hoodie, but it really is a jacket. This is an awesome, lightweight, but super warm insulating layer that I wear all the time in New York. Even when I first got there, I was wearing this in the fall, and I just, I love this jacket. It's called the Adam hoodie, but it zips up. It has a great system in which you can put the hood on, and the hood cinches in, and it just keeps you so warm. A lot of times, your head and your feet are the central points when it comes to warmth control in your entire body, and so the fact that you can have a hood that cinches in, that locks in the heat that trying to leave your body makes the jacket feel a lot warmer than what the weight and the kind of like material feel of the jacket would be. I can't recommend this jacket enough. I love it. It's amazing. I love this jacket. Now, arguably the coolest fleece jacket on this list is the Four Designs Jackered Fleece. This has got to be one of the hardest fleeces that I've ever seen, that I know you've ever seen. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because I see it on sale for 60% off. That's a pretty decent sale going on. I know fashion sales can get 70, 80% off, but 60s right there. And I like the way this one looks a lot. All right. I've never recommended any product from the brand Banana Republic, but when I was searching, I came across this Alps long satin puffer, and I was really impressed by not only the visual elements, like the visual aspects that they choose to portray this jacket, but it just looks like one of the warmest jackets you can own. I didn't see anything bad about it. It just looks nice, looks warm. And if you're not like into all of the kind of like higher end fashion-y brands, but you want something that obviously doubles as a, just a simple, good looking piece, check out this version by Banana Republic. I don't think I've ever said Banana Republic in a video ever. All right, five more jackets. Then we're gonna talk about best retailers and emerging brands that you should take a look at. And like I said, if you're enjoying this video, if you're getting value, give it a like and subscribe for more. For the first jacket, let's talk about Sada's Magi Jacket. Sada, like Frismworks, is one of those unique, out-of-the-box, outwear-focused brands. The Magi Jacket is something that I personally have my eye on. It retails for $435, and I think it's a really unique, fun option for the winter. It has a really unique shape. It has really cool, like, textures and paneling. I don't know if the quality is there for something like this jacket compared to, like, the North Face Nupsy or even, like, a Carhartt jacket, but I think from a stylistic standpoint, it looks really, really cool. And Sada is a really cool brand that you probably should look at just irregardless of this one jacket. Next, we have the Olive Herringbone Tweed Jacket by Left Field NYC. Now, I had a chance to try this jacket on in person in Queens, and it really just blew me away. This is a beautiful freaking top coat-esque jacket. If I had two wish list items when it comes to tweed jackets, it would be this jacket and the next jacket on this list, which is Orslo's Fit Harris Tweed Jacket. Another tweed jacket that I had the privilege of being able to wear. In fact, the founder, the creator of Orslo gave me his two cents about how the fit should be for this jacket, Ichiro Nakatsu. I was in Boulder and asked him about it and we were kind of just going back and forth about it. It was pretty fun conversations, but this is another really beautiful tweed jacket that 
It's just a top layer layering piece, and it looks really good at that. The final two jackets that I want to recommend on this list are the Seven Stores Night Space Coat and the Night Sumo Jacket. There has been one brand over the last 12 months that has continuously wowed me with their visuals as it pertains to their outerwear offerings. That has been Seventh. And like I said, with a lot of the pieces that I just don't have any experience tangibly holding, it's hard to know if these jackets perform as good as they look on Instagram. Between you and I, I wouldn't mind giving it a go for myself. I wouldn't mind being a, a little guinea pig test dummy to see if it really is as nice as it looks. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's get a word in for today's sponsor, Squarespace. Are you interested in making your very own website for a brand or creative project? Squarespace offers a comprehensive amount of features to make the website that you've always dreamed of. If you wanna sell your products direct to consumer or if you just wanna display your body of work, Squarespace makes it easy to do that and more. Currently, I'm using my Squarespace website as a hub for all of my content and all of my social media platforms. And if you needed a sign to help nudge you into creating your first website, this is your sign. Visit squarespace.com slash Drew Joyner for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, so we made it to the section where we're going to talk about the best retailers that you should be looking at, especially for the holiday time period that we're in currently. I don't want this video to go on and on and on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go rapid fire through these retailers. I'm going to add a brand logo for these retailers if they have it. As I'm rapid firing these brands, I'll give you some time to take a screenshot. And in that screenshot, I'll give you a bit of the description of what the multi-brand retailer focuses on. Let's go. Canoe Club is one of the best. Blue and Green, another one of my favorites. My Teresa, love them. Mr. Porter, another fantastic multi-retailer. Garmentory, I've talked about them a ton. Notra, I visited them in Chicago. Netta Porter, one of the best. Todd Snyder, great for menswear. And Packer Shoes, one of the best multi-brand retailers. And that's a great list for a lot of different product offerings from a lot of different brands, small and large, that you should be taking a look at. Okay, next we're going to touch on a few emerging brands that I think you should know about that I think are really cool in my opinion. And it doesn't mean necessarily that you need to go buy from these brands right now for the holidays because obviously the holidays is about being able to get the best value you can for the clothing you purchase. That's why there's so many sales going on. But it's important to support smaller brands as well. These people who aren't multinational corporations, who don't have all of this marketing and have all of this energy and I mean, they have energy, but they just don't have all of the resources that a lot of the bigger players do. So in particular for the winter, for winter jackets, one of my favorite fleece companies is Sunday School. Sunday School is a super dope, super fun brand, um, a brand that's high in the sky, high in the clouds for a lack of better words or for like a double meaning to what Sunday School is. And they make some of the best fleeces I've ever seen, some of the most colorful, some of the most just beautiful fleeces that you can find. Whenever you wear a Sunday School fleece out in public, people are going to take note because it's a really unique, really dope fleece. And they make other and they make other really cool pieces as well. One of my favorites is Bare Knuckles. Bare Knuckles is a brand that you guys have seen me in a ton. They just came out with this Japanese knit kind of sporty, but not really sporty green knit that's really, really cool. I've worn their varsity jacket a ton. They have great product offerings. They understand kind of the contemporary aspect of pants as well. They love their wide fitting pants. Check out Bare Knuckles. One of the most interesting emerging brands that I just became hip to, I'm not going to lie, don't come for me, I just came hip to them, is Paloma Wool. I think for women's wear, Paloma Wool has a really just unique and interesting kind of style perspective for women's wear that I just am a huge fan of. I'm trying to get Lauren to take more looks at Paloma Wool. We've had friends that have gone to the Paloma Wool pop-up. I think Paloma Wool is a really, really dope brand that more people, if you don't know, if you're young, old, in between, whatever you may be, Paloma Wool, give them a look. This, these are the Instagram brands that you should probably be looking at. You're going to find them on Instagram. Their presence is on social media. Another great one is Sandy Liang for women's wear. I think Sandy Liang does a great job. I think the entire movement, the entire micro trend, or the kind of micro fashion statement of like adding bows to everything is in part because of how Sandy Ling has democratized the imagery of that kind of style and fashion. So give Sandy Ling a look. And there's other things. There's Mary Jane's that they carry. There's Kitten Heel. There, there's a ton of really, really interesting options that Sandy Ling has. These next two I have less kind of familiarity with, but I thought that they were interesting and wanted to add them. The, the first one is Mark Kenley Domino Tan, MKDT 
Studio. This is a really interesting brand that you should take a look at. I'm not going to talk extensively about them. And the last one I'll mention is a brand called Shrimp, which looks just super fun. And I thought I would just throw them into this video once again, just to give you guys some options for um, emerging brands. Okay, last, if you're going to buy things secondhand, if you're a more conscious consumer, then let me give you some search terms to help your search go a bit more smoothly. Also, I didn't mention a lot of different jackets. And so this is the section where I'm going to mention more jacket options that maybe I just, I just didn't include them because there's a lot of different types of jackets. And so this is like really, really entry level stuff, but Maybe not. Honestly, if you were to tell me these things, I'd probably still take your advice on them. So I want to give you just types of jackets that you can search. Okay, here we go. When you're searching, a lot of times I mention things such as the top coat, which a top coat is basically like a top layer coat that you put on top of everything that goes underneath your jacket. You can look for wool top coats. You look for different types of pea coats. Search those things in eBay, Depop, Grailed, and you should come up with a kind of really unique subset of options and obviously if there's specific brands that you like or specific materials that you like you could say wool top coats you can say um i guess you could just say like a poly blend top coat something of the sort that should help your search other types of jackets that i just want to quickly lay out there are puffer and or down jackets which are you know puffer jackets are like the bigger jackets parkas or anorak jackets these jackets are really really great for the cold like when it's really really cold these jackets just cover almost everything and they have more of like a weather protectant material and that polyester or nylon that kind of just blocks wind and snow and things like that from accumulating on them of course we have denim jackets this jacket i'm wearing right now is a french chore coat but it's made out of a denim and i said it's a french chore coat so why not just mention french chore coats as well not as warm but really interesting types of under layer chore jacket coats that you can wear for the winter of course you can simply go with something like a raincoat or a shell jacket and these things are going to be more water repellent so when it's raining or snowing the water kind of just beads off you know you know the tiktok memes arcteryx on me i don't want no patagonia like that's rain jackets right now one of the biggest jackets that i did not mention in this video was leather jackets now leather jackets can get really freaking expensive especially when you're dealing with genuine leather or calf leather or just specialty types of leather jackets can get really expensive but vintage secondhand leather jackets are a great option obviously you have to know your sizing know your fit on those I've, I've honestly never purchased a leather, leather jacket. I'm just going to be frank. I've never even bought a leather jacket. I'm not really a leather jacket guy, but do your research, know your sizing. If you like leather jackets, give them a look. I say I've never purchased a leather jacket, but I do love varsity jackets. And depending on the sizing convention, I just go, if they have large, extra large, if they have like standardized sizing, I just go with a large, but know your sleeve length, know your bust or chest, and then know your actual like, kind of like this area down to your waist length for the body and then last i mentioned one of these jackets in the video but we have like faux fur i know people get kind of caught up in faux fur versus real fur uh because obviously animal cruelty and i understand that 100 percent. but uh if you like kind of like the more polyester based faux fur jackets if you like that look if you like having kind of a very like grandiose type of jacket especially i see this a lot in women's wear men's wear too but like i feel like i've seen a lot of really stylish women wear faux fur really well give that a look on the secondhand market. All right, that may have been the fastest that I've ever talked in a video, but I tried to get this out for you as quickly as I could. Let me know some of your favorite jackets that I mentioned, or if I didn't mention any jackets, let me in the community know the jackets we missed down in the comments. If you love Harrington jackets, if you love particular leather jackets, please let the community know. Let me know. I'm still learning and I'm still growing as a creator, trying to give you guys the best content that I can, giving you guys the best recommendations I can, and I can only do that if it's a two-way conversation and it usually is and i appreciate you guys for that there are literally so many skus or skus for winter jackets there's thousands upon thousands upon thousands and so while this list is a comprehensive list it doesn't mean that i've got everything covered so hopefully you guys enjoyed the video let others know what you like as always i'm spreading peace love and positivity in 2023 so that means i'm spreading peace love and positivity to you for me wherever you are in the world have a wonderful rest of your day i'll be on to peace Yo, what is good post vid vid? Here are the fist bumps for the one time. Bop. Thank you so much for singing to the end of the video. Here's the second one for the one time, for the two times. Bop. I appreciate you so, so much.
I had to bang out this video quick. I know it's pretty long still. Like I, I tried to do the best I could. I was doing a lot of talking, but let's just let's just end it. Okay. The post vid vid question of the day is: Has it snowed where you live? Okay. Has it snowed in New York City? It hasn't snowed. When I went back home for Colorado, it snowed just a tiny, tiny bit, but like it wasn't like crazy snow. Let me know: Has it snowed where you live, or do you live in a place where it doesn't snow at all? And you watched this in video the entire way through, made it to the PVV. That's how I know you're a real one because if you live in like Arizona or if you live somewhere in the Caribbean or just somewhere where it's hot near the equator, I know it don't snow and I know that you're just looking at winter jacket videos because you're like, what if, what if I could experience being cold because you're freaking hot all the freaking time. But anyways, enjoy the guys the rest of the day. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.